Hello grade 10 welcome to your second lesson on numbers, patterns, or series and sequences. Yesterday we looked at work that you have really seen in grade 8 and specifically grade 9. None of that should have been very new to you. So today I want to look at two examples that are more difficult sequences and series. And in grade 10 they like to give you a sequence um, that has a variable in it. So this is an infinite sequence, meaning that it carries on, there's three dots. But again, I see this variable. So the first question says, write down the next two terms in the pattern. Now for any pattern, if I gave you, for example, nine, three, sorry, nine, six, three, in order to write down the next two terms, you would have to know what am I doing each time. And it's very clear in this pattern, I'm subtracting three. Hence, I've got a constant difference, so to find the next term would just be zero. So that's what we would do in a normal pattern, and that's exactly what we'd have to do here. I want to know what is the constant difference. What am I doing each time in order so that I can figure out the next two terms? But there's two things going on here. I've got a change in the value for x, and I've got a change in the value for the constant. So let's talk about what's happening. For the x's, what am I doing each time? 2x to 3x, if I was to use a calculation, I would have said term 2 minus term 1. So 3x minus 2x leaves me with 1x. So firstly, I'm adding an x. Let's see if it's true here. 3x plus x definitely gives me 4x. Now I need to compare what's happening with the constant terms. So from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 5, what's happening each time? I'm adding 2. This is my constant difference for this series and sequence, x plus 2. So to answer the first question that says give me the next two terms of the sequence, I would say 4x plus 5 plus x plus 2. So the fourth term would be 4x plus 5 plus the constant difference. You could do this in your head if you wanted to, x plus 2. So the fourth term would have a value of 5x plus 7. The fifth term, I would then take 5x plus 7 and add the constant difference. So that would give me 6x plus 9. And those would be the next two terms of the sequence. Question 1.2 asks me to write the formula for the general term of the sequence. So if I think about this being an arithmetic, because I'm adding the same thing each time, my formula would be an plus b, where a is the constant difference, which is what we've worked out, and b is term 0. So that means instead of adding x plus 2, I need to subtract x plus 2 from the first term to get my term 0. I'm going to do the working out here to show you. So I take my first term, 2x plus 1, and I need to subtract my constant difference. Note how I put my constant difference in brackets. It needs to go in brackets because if I didn't have the bracket there, I would be saying 2x plus 1 minus x plus 2, which is not what I want to say. I want to take the first term and I want to subtract the whole constant difference. So working this out, I have 2x minus x, which simply gives me x, and 1 minus 2, which will give me negative 1. And that will be my term 0 over here. So 2x plus 1 minus x plus 2 leaves me with x minus 1, and that would be my b value. So my general rule for this is going to be tn equals a, which we said was x plus 2, times n, plus b, which is x minus 1. 1.3 says, if the 13th term of the sequence has a value of 95, calculate x. So if the 13th term has a value of 95, we must calculate x. Here is my general rule. I hope you can see what we must do. Instead of writing n, I'm going to write 13, and I'm going to give the whole equation a value of 95. So let's see what happens. Value of 95 instead of tn equals x plus 2 times 13. Instead of writing n, I'm writing 13 plus x minus 1. And I simply need to solve for x. How do I do this? I distribute my 13 in. I get 13x plus 26 plus x minus 1. If I gather like terms on this side, I get 14x plus 25. 
Solving for x, I take 25 over. I get 14x equals 70. And to solve for x, I must say 70 divided by 14. And I end up with 5. And the second example looks like this. 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared. So a place where kids make mistakes with this example is when they then go and rewrite these answers. So they'll give me 1, 9, 25, and 49, and they'll try their darndest to find a general rule for this sequence. And it is doable, but it is not grade 10 work. Okay? What can you see is happening? We've got the same thing happening to a sequence that actually involves 1, 3, 5, 7. If I just compare 1, 3, 5, 7, what's happening? I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2, I'm adding 2. So just looking at 1, 3, 5, 7, I've got an arithmetic sequence. So arithmetic sequence must use Tn equals a n plus b, where a is your constant difference, so that's 2n plus b, so instead of adding 2, I'm going to work in the opposite direction, and I'm going to subtract 2, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1, that would be my term 0, so b would be minus 1, and then all we've done is, we've taken that sequence, and we've squared it, let's see if it works very quickly, if I put term 1 in, so first term, I've got 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is, ah, 1 squared. Let's look if we put term 2 in. So if I use term 2, and I have 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is, term 3, uh, sorry, term 2 is, 4 minus 1 is, 3 squared. There's my pattern. 1, 3, 5, 7. So remember to look for patterns within patterns. And that is the end of your more difficult examples. Series and sequences take a lot of practice and a lot of logic. So I hope you're able to do the exercise too. It's just three questions and I hope it goes well for you.